You're watching Swipe. Here's a little taste of what we've got for you in the next 10 minutes. Alex gets an exclusive look at the tablet saving time on hospital wards. I try to find out how long it'll be before we're all doing this to pay for things. And we've got the point and click detective adventure with an old school feel in our games review. Welcome to Swipe. We've come to Visa's new Innovation Centre this week. It's where they're working on futuristic ways to pay for things with big brands from all over the world. They've got a connected car, sitting room and even a pretend shop here, all set to demonstrate new payment methods. But before we have a look at those, we're going to check in with Alex. He's been to see the tablet tech cutting the time it takes doctors and nurses to read our vital signs. The NHS has never been busier. And with workloads on wards going up, saving time is vital. Hello. Joyce, how are you getting on today? I'm very well. For Mary and other patients, regular checkups like this are nothing out of the ordinary. But where doctors would once have scrawled down notes, a new system has scrapped paper charts altogether. I'll just pop these around your arm, okay? okay no problem. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Now a tablet computer is used to monitor your vital signs. And scan your wristband as well. Each patient has a barcode on their wrist, which allows staff to quickly save and compare their readings. Let's just pop this here. Designers claim the time it saves is equivalent to having three and a half extra nurses on shift, and using the tablets helps eliminate errors. So let's just record that. It's taken seven years to develop and is now active in four hospitals. You can see that you have a much more readable interface and you have information that's all over the hospital rather than by the bedside and you have information that's available to all the people within the hospital who would be involved in that patient's care. You also are able to give prompts and advice to the staff who are looking after the patient so you'll see that at the end of the track and trigger score which has been added up for the clinicians which is done automatically where it was once done manually there's an advice button if they press the advice button you can see that the advice is given which is what the trust wants doing for someone who is that unwell. So here in Oxford the system has already helped in the care of over 80,000 patients and the plan over the next 12 months is to roll this system out at four more NHS trusts right across England. With no sign of pressure easing on the NHS could increasing reliance on tech like this be the answer? I think that overall it's a good idea. I think it will improve efficiencies and save time. Um, there are a couple of issues, you know, nurses will need to be trained up very quickly and not all the nurses are going to be tech savvy, so there could be some potential issues there. OK, Mary, we are all done. Everything looks... For Mary, looks it's good, good news and positive fun. scores. Yeah. 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 So far. Uh, that's really good, isn't it? You can see we've got an improvement over time, haven't mm -hmm. we, which is really good. But for the NHS, it's a different picture. And so opportunities to use tech to save time are in high demand. Alex Morgan, Sky News. Stay with us. Still to come, how long do you think it will be before shops stop accepting cash and cards in favour of more futuristic payment methods? That's what I'll be trying to find out after a roundup of this week's tech news. NASA's suggested finding a second Earth is not just a matter of if, but when. It's after scientists discovered seven new planets, three of which lie in the Goldilocks zone of their sun, meaning temperatures are just right to support liquid water, a key ingredient for life. Fitness trackers that count steps made headlines this week after a leading US scientist questioned their benefits. Dr. Greg Hager from Johns Hopkins University suggested the goal of 10,000 steps a day may not be right for everyone and that the target is based on a single and outdated study. And illegally streaming live football matches, music and other video is about to get more difficult. Search engines Google and Bing have signed up to a voluntary code of practice, which will mean dodgy websites are moved further down in your results list. Stick around for our games review. In just a few minutes, we've got the indie game that takes you inside someone else's phone. Before that, though... You're joining me now in this pretend shop with Bill from Visa. He's not pretend. You're going to pose as a shop assistant for me now, aren't you? And we're going to talk about this biometrics device. It's how you can pay with just using your fingerprints. OK. So let me show you how it works. All right, so if I've been checking out some hoodies over here, if I want to buy this one, do you have that in stock? We have this hoodie in stock. So I'm going to ring up the hoodie. And instead of taking out your card or even tapping your phone, 
All you need to do to make the purchase is swipe your hand under the swipe, sensor. Swipe, not touch it. No, nope, just swipe your hand. And that's reading my fingerprints? It's read your fingerprints, and in a couple of seconds, payment confirmed, check mark, payment done by Gemma Morris. And when we talk about biometric technology, what, what is it that we actually mean by that? Biometric is anything that's unique about you that we can use to identify you when you make a payment. So this is an example of fingerprints, but we've used iris recognition because your irises are unique, facial recognition. And in fact, today, even the way you walk, we've discovered the way you walk is as unique as your fingerprints. Really, it's that individual? That individual. So how long do you think it'll be until shops don't accept cash or cards anymore? I think some of the more innovative shops, because we're already starting to talk to them, will start building in things like facial recognition or, or the next generation for fingerprints. Um, and I think this is just the beginning of a long journey where we can authenticate you based on things that only you have. Now, I'm done with the shops. I want to drive home. Unfortunately, this isn't my car. It looks just like a tablet stuck to the middle of the car. Right, so in this case, this is a prototype. Let me show you how it works. You want to buy fuel because the sensors in your car tell you that you're running low on petrol and it starts to find the service stations for you so you can fill it up. And even before you get there, you may be hungry and it adds the option of adding refreshments. Oh, now you're just encouraging us to eat junk food. But... Well, or <laughs> maybe something healthy. But I could just use an app on my phone to look for the nearest petrol station, couldn't I? No, I think that's right. And, but I think what this does is, is take that experience kind of several steps further. We've driven home now, and we're in this pretend sitting room because, Bill, you're going to talk to me about bringing banking into our homes. We've built banking services into Echo. Alexa, open Voice Bank. Welcome to your bank account. How can I help? Send mum $100 in Canada. I have sent. Your order to is in undefined using Visa Direct. It will be in the bank account in five minutes. One of the big criticisms, though, with voice automated systems is the idea that Amazon or Google or whoever's manufactured the device could be constantly listening to us in our homes. Does that freak you out? We look at issues around personal information and privacy so that while you're you know, conducting a banking transaction using Amazon Echo, they're not collecting that data. Who is it that drives the change? Is it the banks or is it the shops? Because you've got to have that ecosystem where everybody's compatible. You know, more recently, we've seen companies like Amazon or companies like Google or companies like Apple or the car manufacturers all join this ecosystem to create new user experiences, take the friction out of commerce. And so we'll see that ecosystem continue to grow. Video games time now, and this week we put Gav in the hot seat, and he picked us a pretty eclectic mix. So I've been playing this game called Normal Lost Phone, which is basically you found a phone and you get to go through it, which kind of is everyone's dream. Like, I've found a phone before, but it's been locked, so I haven't been able to go through it. But this is completely unlocked, and it's uh, a guy's phone. Uh, you're not sure who he is, what happened to him, why he's lost his phone, and you basically have to go through all his messages and his emails and his photos and things like that, and you're kind of piecing together this weird little mystery. You're never quite sure what's going on with it. I still haven't completely figured out what it is, but there's like these weird little puzzles in it where you have to work out the Wi-Fi code for the area you're in, and when that happens, then you unlock a little bit more. So it's not just reading messages and being nosy. I'm really excited to sort of find out the actual mystery of it because I have all these different ideas um, but if it's going where I think it's gonna go it's really really good Thimbleweed Park is a point-and-click adventure which is done by Ron Gilbert who made probably the best point-and-click adventures ever like the first two Monkey Island games um, it's kind of it kind of presents itself as a murder mystery game but actually it's less like that and more sort of kind of working out what's going on in the world um, you have this weird sort of dead clown uh, who's cursed and he's trying to sort of figure out what happened to him and you also have these like weird sort of X-Files FBI agents it's a point and click game like when was the last time we had a really good one of those and we haven't that's the thing uh, but Ron Gilbert is the guy who can do it and it's really really good I played a really really early build of it but it's coming out this year and I think it's going to be a good one so Band Footage Volume 2 is Resident Evil 7's second batch of DLC. And to be honest, they're just doing whatever they want. Resident Evil 7 is quite a serious horror game. And then you have these sort of molded characters wearing party hats and things like that. Like, I don't know what is going on in the Capcom studios, but they seem to be just having a laugh with Resident Evil 7, which is good. There is a story sort of mode to it, but it's only about 20 minutes long. And that's kind of like a little precursor to the next bit of DLC we're going to have, which, you know, is really, really 
really going to tie into the main storyline. And that's the one that everyone's been thinking about. But it is just really good to see people just having a laugh with their DLC, which not many developers do. Well, that's it for this week. But don't worry if you've just caught the end of Swipe. You can catch up with any of our episodes on demand in all the usual places. I'll be back next week. I hope you can join us then. Bye-bye.